was great. So as I uh, alluded to um, previously before John read it, that was great, John. It was awesome. Uh, we have a special section in this issue, issue uh, 42, of Contamundo Fellows. Uh, one of the reasons, well, the way I was introduced to the Contamundo is uh, on issue 40, our featured poet was Lorianne Guerrero. Um, and before meeting Lorianne, I hadn't really heard much about Contamundo before. I'm from the Northwest, um, Portland, Oregon, and, and I just, had just moved to Austin not too long before that. Um, and so then when I, I met Lorianne and she did her reading in the same, very same spot, uh, Kelsey introduced me to Celeste, who, had, who did the uh, review for that book, or um, A Tongue in the Mouth of the Dying, the book that Lorianne had just put out before. She was our future poet. And I got to meet Celeste and see how great she was. And start to, it was kind of like, I think a, a few months later, uh, Lorianne invited me to a Contamundo reading over at AUT, yeah. and I got to see kind of the culture that you guys have created and how beautiful it is and how familial it is. And it made me really want to figure out more about Contamundo. The more I looked into how great the organization is and how great the poets are that are coming out of it, it just seemed like we needed to do something to, um, to, sh to in our small way, showcase the great work that's being done um, at Contamundo. And so uh, that's where the kind of idea for this issue uh, came out, especially since we were featuring Celeste, it seemed like it was a no-brainer to kind of take that as an opportunity to also talk about Contamundo um, and celebrate in our way uh, the great work that's being done. And so we have uh, Gloria and Liliana and Celeste are gonna be reading here in a second, so I'll introduce them each individually. Um, but I just wanted to say that quickly. And also I saw, I think this is a, to Gloria, I saw a YouTube video the other day. I was, I was kind of trying to look up the poets and stuff. And, and somebody called, I'm like, what's up? Yeah, what's up? What's up? <laughs> no, but the, the, the person that introduced you called you one of the hidden gems of Austin. Oh, and, uh, oh that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure you remembered that or not, but I was like, after and then I got to listen to you read oh. on the YouTube video, and I was like, yeah, that's true. It sounds, oh. that's accurate. And so we, um, it's great to have you here and, and read and help, again, celebrate the launch. And so. Uh, Gloria Mescua is a Contamundo Fellow, as you know. Um, she's been published in several journals, including Diversity, the Diversity Anthology, Quelly Journal, Generations Literary Journal, Texas Poetry uh, Calendar, uh, Pilgrimage, and she's also a workshop presenter uh, for youth and adults, an alumna of Hedgebrook's uh, Writers in Residency program. In 2013, she won the first place in both the Austin International Poetry Festival contest and the Austin Poetry Society Award. And so, as you'll see, uh, those awards are not in vain because her poetry is really spectacular. And so, if you could help me welcome Gloria. That'd be great. That was a really nice introduction. Thank you. Yeah. I really uh, appreciate uh, Borderlands inviting us to represent Canto Mundo, and uh, uh, that's a, a very nice honor to be here and to read. Uh, this is a one is called Where Does the Border Lie? Where does the border lie? In the muddy river, in the pitiless desert, at the opening of the womb, in the difference between bienvenidos and you're not wanted here, with the grandparents left behind, shrinking out of sight. In the fading voices of our stories, language lost in generations, on the work-worn palms, in the sweat stains, in the classrooms, between the shadow of our struggles and the glow of our success. In the hyphenated labels in other people's minds, on the other side of town and across the tracks, in those dirty Mexicans, and they're not our kind. On the surface of our skin cells, the color of our eyes, in the invisible shield we carry like a bruise to deflect the unexpected, keep indignity at bay. Where does the border lie? On empty shelves where our spirit and our sorrow don't exist. In the black pages of our people's future and our braided past. In the constant mind dance crossing borders every day. Uh, this is one that has some Spanish in it, so I think you can get the gist if you don't know Spanish from the English part of it. It's called Skull Face. Se van, a, se van a pegar los dientes, no puedes hablar de lo que pasó, de los montazos. I don't know how to serve you, tongueless skull, crowned with marigold. Hablarás el día de los muertos. I don't know how to speak for you 
pedazos de hueso y lágrimas. Pero aún te honro in pale words, whatever way I can. And this next one uh, was a very long poem, but it ended up being a short poem. <laughs> it was over two pages. It's, too long. it's called The Naming of Things. I am gathering leaves, examining the outlines, smooth ovals, sawtooth edges, fine veins. Most still green, but the downfall is starting. Trails buried with fragments of ochre, burnt sienna, brown. A rare call in the morning from my son. Unexpectedly, he has called me. The veins are still viable, but his heart, which once be undermined, sounds hollow. I fingered the serrated edges of this unnamed thing, hesitate to enter the dark woods I must search tread a hard-worn path, go back in deep, reach into brambles, examine each leaf. And uh, this poem is called Ignite the Dark. The stars know everything, the way your hair will curl in the rain, which apples will fall to rot, the last jaguar's low growl. The stardust whirls of your fingertips, lifeline crawling across your palm. The way the rain will blow, who will love you, who will not, the empty chamber of your heart. The stars know everything, and if we believe that this is true, why lie awake in the dark? And then I Thank you. I have some You can clap. <laughs> These have been published so, uh, in this book, but um, this is called In Those Rooms. It's an actor, Yehudi Amitra. When I passed by the school where I studied, I remember the hallway loud with chatter, lockers banging, scoop, shoes scuffling, shiny wood floors as a bell rang. My brain soaking in the society of school and teachers who existed for us only there in those rooms, what I learned and what I never knew was still to be learned. Equations, but not the consequences of inequality. The chemical reactions, but not love's chemistry. Radioactivity, but not the deterioration of time. I read Sophocles and Shakespeare, never knew I would write my own tragedies, never knew the complexity of music could not match the intricacies of the heart the ways it could be broken. History didn't teach me that change would spin at an exponential rate, that I would hear only faint echoes of friends' voices as years passed. Daily, I dressed in flimsy garments, soaking in the breath of those rooms. I clothed the future with hope. Nothing prepared me or the stripping away. And the next one is an aphrastic poem about an uh, African artifact that is a linguist staff, and they're made of carved wood with gold leaf on them, and this particular one has human ears on it, and then an elephant on top. Akiyami, linguist staff. Ears of gold, ears of wood, we too are listening, barely hear a whisper of your spider stories. Akiyami, did you hear the Russian River Volta as the Akan roam, the chief's advisors carrying ageless worms in your ebony heart? Akiyami, did your ears hear the cries of ancestors sold for gold, stolen from the center of the earth? Motherland mourning its scattered seeds. Catch great-grandmother's spirit, murmurs winding into the wash pot of European and indigenous blood. Akiyami, did you hear your people's struggles in their traveling tales? And do you still hear Nayami's harp strings 
vibrating in the web of your daughter's head. Ears of gold, ears of wood, we are waiting for a tongue to speak. And uh, this one is, um, I'm, gonna just, I'm just gonna skip that. It's called The Workbook for My Mom. Evenings, home from cooking lunch for school children, she'd clench her pencil, copying words and sentences from a child's workbook, learning how to read and write. See the children, rye bread is made. Rye followed run in the alphabet book. She capitalized and punctuated haphazardly, her words overlapping on the page. Run, some children, rye bread is made. More blank pages than not, lines started and stopped. See the children run. Some children can run fast. The slanted, slanted words are fading. Did you see the children rush out of the room? Rye bread, rye flour. And the last one is called Consequences. I'm the result of love, of hunger and the moon, of passion, heat before the coals set in, happenstance and whispered secrets, of opportunity, sperm and egg colliding, Genes and mutations, magic and blood, of pheromones and skin, of need, of darkness, conquerors, slaves, enslavers, lust and violence, of natives, of immigrants, shifting boundaries through the ages, of wanderers, tillers and lovers, of night, of day, of night. I am the result of survivors. I am the result of love.